course, as soon as I get the video out, they stand up. But the ram flock was all lying down here waiting for me to come. <laughs> so this is going to be a challenge to um, feed them because they're all there. Anyway. Hey, boys. How are you? Yeah. Good boys. Are you all there? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Everybody's there. Whoa, we're having a bit of a set too. Okay. So I've come up into our woods, which is a little bit polluted with laurel. And uh, I want to look where the I found the fox skull because some of the canines are missing. So I wanna see if I can find the canines where I found the fox skull. So it's somewhere in here. Oh, there it is, okay. So here, oh look, there's, that's a fox, the fox's vertebrae. This would be one of its uh, bones for its toes. The skull was somewhere here. You can see bits of its skeleton. But I'd love to get the canines, um, the rest of the canines to complete the skull. Um, it might have been, you can see bits are spread. There was probably badgers. Hello, you. Are you helping me hunt for canines? For fox canines? Hmm? It's a distant relation of yours. So, no, leave that alone. Don't do that. You're bold. Okay. So, you can see a lot of the smaller bones here. There's another vertebrae, but probably the badgers spread when they were eating it. There's all the ribs and all the ribs. So the badgers might have spread it out a bit. Can you move your bottom? Thank you. So all kinds of beetles. Look at that. Still feeding on the bony remains of the fox. I might not find any of the canine. Ah, there we go. That's the canine that's missing. It was one of the front canines of the main skull, not the lower jaw. The lower jaw canines are missing, but that's the front canine that I was looking for. So there we go. I found it. Yay. So this fox will slowly decompose into the ground. You can see its bones. Well, I put those there, but they're spread over there, over there, and all in this area. Java, what are you eating? Hopefully it's not a bone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, get down ladies. Come on, come on, I found what I was looking for. Oh, wait a minute, there's another one. I found another one. Okay, now that I got my eye in, maybe I'll find the other bottom canine of the lower jaw that's missing. You looking too, Bear. Okay, so I've got two of them. Two of the canines. Okay. Now, I might have just... My luck might have only gone so far. So, and that's, I thought that was another canine, but it's a bit of ash tree or ash seed pod. Okay, now I think I'm not gonna have any more luck, but I think that was pretty lucky to find these two canines. Is that, no. Yeah, I think I've done pretty well. And what I found. Yeah, I think I'm gonna call it. 
Now, I'm going to go put these in the skull so you can see what I'm talking about, what, where these go. Oh, they found something exciting. Oh, they're all digging. <laughs> what are you guys digging for? Probably voles or shrews. Okay, back to my office and I'll show you how these fit in and why I came to get them because they kind of complete the skull. Isn't that right, pups? Look at this, my hollies are doing so well. Oh, there's a bird shit here, which means there's a bird roosting somewhere up there. I've got to attack these laurels more. See these laurels? I'm trying to get them back, cut back, so that there's more holly. So holly like this can get bigger and better. Holly is better for birds to nest in because the corvids don't want to find them because of all those prickly bits. Whereas these things, when birds nest in the laurel, it's easier for the corvids to hunt them out and find them and eat them. Look at this little holly. So if I cut back the laurel around this holly, this will grow better. Anyway, that's my little bit of forestry. I might come in here with some loppers and do some lopping. And also make it a little bit more accessible for me to come in here. Look at this, this is this huge ash tree here. We had to chop the top off of it. Look at the mushrooms. Oh, wow. Look at that little kingdom of mushrooms. It's gorgeous. Oh, look who's arrived. Hello, you. How are you? Kitty. Yeah. So this huge ash tree is home to a series of bats and beehives. Honey beehives. Come on. Yeah, I need to get out. There we go. So that tree at some stage is going to come down. So hopefully it won't hit this tree that I just planted this last spring. Please, please stay upright. And you, please, please don't smash my baby tree when you come down. Maybe you could go that away smash some of the laurel and particularly not this bird cherry here this is a really important bird cherry which sadly got thumped when we took this ash down okay look another holly it's coming out sideways i'll have to prune this back so that it continues going upright so it doesn't keep growing in my pathway This is all snowdrops and cow parsley in the spring. Okay, here's the skull. Here's the skull upside down as it were. And here are the two canine teeth. Now, if I take that out, and that out. These are the lower jaw. And then I turn this over. You can see there's only one canine here and that canine is missing. There's also a hole here for a canine. Let's see, how do I do this? There you go. You can see the hole for a canine. And here's another hole for a canine here. So I only found one canine. So let's see if this is going to work in here. That might work. Let's see, or is it this one? Okay, that one doesn't work. So I think this one goes here. Oh, maybe it doesn't. No, I think this is, I think this one does the work. I have to wobble it in.
There we go. That, no, it's too curved. It doesn't work. That's too curved. So I'd say that's the lower one. Maybe this is the... Oh, that looks too curved. You know what? I probably have the lower jaw canines. Nope, that doesn't fit there. Aha, okay. That one fits there. Let's see. That one fits there. Oh, it does. Okay. So, oh no, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it is does belong here. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Which bit fits the best? No. Because this canine is solid. That one's not. So maybe back to the lower jaws. I might have to go back and see if I can really hunt out the um, correct. See, there's the two canines of the lower jaw of the fox. So I'm still missing that canine. Yeah, those fit like that. Okay, so I've got the lower jaw. I just don't have, I'm missing that canine there. How annoying. Anyway, it's still a beautiful skull. Found on All Hallows Eve. I forgot uh, to show you putting the jaw together. Um, so here's the sc skull, <clears throat> and you can see right there, there's this hollow section right there in the skull. So you take the jaw and this hinge there, you go in there, and there, there's the, whoops, there's the jaw being fit together. Maybe the be other side will be better and easier to see because uh, you can see the top jaw and the bottom jaw. There. Oh, the tooth is gone. <laughs> I'm going to have to glue that together. Oh, and another tooth has fallen out. Okay, this tooth goes right there. These are tiny teeth, some of these. Yep. Let's see if I can get this one in. Oh, it doesn't want to go in. Come on. Oh, the dogs think somebody's turned up. Oh, maybe it was in the top jaw. Oh dear. Uh, itchy nose. Okay. Anyway, I was going to show you how these two fit together like that. So that's the top and the bottom jaw together. Actually, maybe that's a top canine. Maybe that is the canine. And this canine does belong here. I just haven't wiggled it in right. Uh, I don't think that's right. Yeah, not sure if that's right. Let's see. Hmm. No, that's not right. Anyway, it's a little jigsaw puzzle to do. Oh, maybe it is right. Maybe I just have to wiggle it in. Anyway, there's lots of bits of enamels come off. And then now this tooth, and I have to find where this tooth went. This tooth is tiny. Look at that tininess of it. Okay, anyway, 
enough about fox skulls. So one of the light jobs I can do the day after physio is collecting pondweed, which I bring up here to this water tank and I let it float away. This pondweed here, this stuff is a great oxygenator and cleans the water. So I slowly add it to this tank so the few fish I have left can survive. They've all gone under because I've, uh, oh, there you can see a kind of orange shadow. All the huge fish were eaten by an otter. So I only had the smaller fish, which are growing on beautifully. That one's a really, really fat one. Look at how fat that one is. Maybe it's pregnant. But there's between 11 and 14 fish, big fish or big-ish fish, not the huge fish. This is a water tank that is um, comes from the rain and it fills. It was built by either my great-grandfather or my grandfather. I, it's more likely that it was my great-grandfather built it to water the garden. But uh, yeah, so there's also this oxygenating pond weed that I got from a friend's pond. So this is rooted now on the bottom. I got that earlier this year. So there's lots of it here. This is the sunniest corner where the most light comes. But that pond weed that I just put in here, it's probably sunk at this stage, wherever it's gone, that one can grow in dark shadow. Like the sun will never reach that corner over there. So filling it with pond weed cleans up the uh, nutrient richness that the fish shit introduces to the pond. But this makes it really good water for watering one's vegetables because it's clean rain water. And then it's got the mineral richness of the fish um, nutrients floating through it. So there we go. Anyway, so that's another light job I can do on days like this. Look at those incredible pond weeds. They're really actually very primitive looking and beautiful. Look at that. Oh, look, there's some pond weeds still on my hand. There. Excellent. And this works in the sun for aerating. This, it's a solar little fountain thing uh, my friend Sarah gave me a couple of Christmases ago. Another light job I can do doing the, um, on the days when I can't do heavy th stuff is do some repotting. So these are all fever fuse. This tray was full of fever fuse. So I've been potting on a few. So these are seeds friends wanted me to sow or they wanted fever few. So I've potted them on. And here is they, they're potted into bigger pots there. And then if we come over here, you can see some of the other species that I have. I might have already told you. This is um, ladies' bed straw. This is a greater napweed. Not very many in that one. Another greater napweed, honesty. Um, here's some greater napweeds, two different kinds. There's a blue one, and then that's a purple one. Um, and then the devil's bit scabies. Look, they're beginning to sprout up, which is very exciting. So this is a tray of devil's bit scabies. And then here's another tray of napweed that's beginning to germinate. But I'm very excited about the devil's bit. Uh, devil's bit scabies is a uh, plant, a flower, a bloom, that when people mow their meadows, this is one of the a really vitally important species for pollinators and insects in the late summer and autumn coming into winter. And most people mow their meadows before these are even risen up to bloom. So these are very, very important and becoming very rare because everybody's thinking they're wildflower meadows. They can mow, but they mow before these have done their thing. So that's why these are becoming rare. So yeah, these are doing really well. I'm gonna have to transplant a lot of these. The uh, ladies' bed straw, they're doing really well. Anyway, there, that's uh, my, the vine house at the moment, full of things that I'm rescuing from the cold. Look at these, I got these last year. 
They're so magnificent. There is no purpose except that they're beautiful, at least to, you know, my farming. I think they're stunning looking. I've got a whole series of different succulents that I've collected this year. That This is a kind of um, aloe. This is the aloe that most people know of. But these do have a purpose. These are good for burns. But these are just fun to have. You've got to have some fun plants. Now, they're all interested in that corner because there's a mouse or rat hole. I don't know which. Inca's getting very excited. Look, she's just digging right in behind the uh, weed suppressor. Are you excited back there? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that is light work that I'm doing. Oh, these are cuttings that I've taken this summer. That's a friend of mine's rose that's coming true, I hope. That's a um, salvia, and this is a shrub, I really hope. I love this shrub, and I'm hoping it's coming true. It doesn't look very well. So some of these aren't going to take, which is going to be very annoying. But you can't win them all. You can't win them all. And these are still doing a beautiful job in blooming these geraniums. Okay, come on, let's go in and have coffee. I've been doing loads. Oh, these are more scabias that I planted outside in this pot. These are more scabias. Come on, come on, Inca, leave it. Come on, come on. Good girl, a girl. Keep that warm in there. For me, as much as the plants, so I can come out and do stuff there. Everything else is beginning to go to bed. I have to plant this rose. This is gonna be a beautiful, it's a rose I was given and it's a climbing English rose. So I've got to plant it somewhere. Anyway, busy times. I've got to take the umbrella in. I gotta wait until I can lift it though without my physio problems. Anyway, that's life at the moment. I'm seed collecting, this is honesty, but I'm seed collecting two different kinds of seeds and I can put them in the same container. These are Black Eyed Susans or Rebecca, whichever way you want to call it. And what's cool about the Rebecca is the birds are starting to eat them. So when the birds start eating them, you can see that's half a seed head, you know that those are going to be ripe seeds. Oops, I plucked the whole twig. But um, yeah, so I'm collecting these seeds and uh, uh, there we go. Collecting these seeds with two different seed types means that uh, I won't confuse them, but I'm also just using the one container to collect the seeds. So, because these, those, the Rebecca seeds are, these ones you can feel, oh, that's seeds in that one. So you open that up and you can see the big flat seeds. So, and honesty is so easy to sow. It's a uh, biannual. So what I sow now will grow next year into a plant. And then the following year, it will become a flowering plant. So the thing is to find those bits with seeds in them. So that's the fertile seeds, those flat things. So I'm just gonna collect a few more because when you sow them yourself, you can pick as many as you like and sow as many as you like. So there we go. So this is another light job I can do. There's the vine house inside. This rose is so, smells so good. Its season is over, but anyway. So I'm going to, I'll um, take these seed heads apart and spread, the, sow the seeds to grow babies. I like growing babies. Evening feeding. Hey, ladies. Am I going to be able to trick you? Or is that just not going to work anymore? Hmm? Are you too brainy for me now? 
Have you figured out all my tricks? Huh? Uh. Have you figured out all my tricks? You behave. You behave. Leave them be. Okay. And look, you're trying to get through that way. Yeah. Nope. The trick's not going to work. Oh, dear. Go on. Get up. Get up. Okay, leave it. Come on, leave it. There we go. It's just so that I don't get tipped over. Me being tipped over at the moment is not a good plan. Hey, kitty. Woo Up the elder tree. Okay, you guys, come on, dogs. Come on. Ooh, he's gone right up. Up where the birds are, except there's none there. Right up at the tippy top. So we can tower over all the sheep eating. Hey you, you're not getting the boys food, but I'm letting you guys out. So you guys can come out, but this is the boys bucket. You're not getting it, Ebony. You guys aren't getting it. Come on, not getting it. Nope. Sorry, Miss Ed, and not Ebony. Why do I keep calling you Ebony? Little bit, little bit, little bit. You're a little bit. Ebony Sodley is dead. Little bit, not ebony. Oh, God, me brain. They're all down the hill. So they're racing up to meet me at the gate. Maybe that didn't work very well. I was hoping that would work. But, never mind. There they are, grazing. Or not grazing. Eating their supper. Eating their supper. <laughs>